came to your first ever Ramones concert, first proper concert, can you remember where that was? September 30th, 1989, Leicester, England. Exactly. That's exactly where I was okay. on that date. Can you remember anybody in the front with a Hey Oh Let's Go banner? Um, no. Tell you the truth, I was pretty pretty nervous that night and uh, I was ducking coins and bottles and boots and spit and everything else. So I don't really have much of a recollection of who was in front of me. I remember mean, like the European scene is um, sort of an important scene for the Ramones. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. This is where the Ramones came to to break. You know, yeah. the Ramones broke in in uh, England specifically long before they got recognition in the states. So the European scene was always important for us. You know, and, wh and what was the job like filling DD's shoes then? Yeah, I did not. Um, I didn't think of it as filling Dee Dee's shoes. I, um, but you know, nobody's gonna fill Dee Dee's shoes. There's, there's only one Dee Dee. But um, I just looked at it like I got hired to do a job, and I was just gonna do it as best as I possibly could. Uh, the last couple times I had seen the Ramones, Dee Dee was not the Dee Dee from back in the day. Just just standing there strumming all the strings, and. Uh, um, and I had seen the Ramones back when they were really exciting to watch. So I made it my mission to try to make the live show as exciting as I could. But I, I mean, I would never ever compare myself to Dee Dee or, or anything like that. Dee Dee to me is not, nobody compares to him, you know. He really stands on his own. To me, it was kind of struggling. It came to life yeah. in that in that last seven years. What was it? That was a big compliment um, from Joey and from Johnny when they said I came into the band. It kind of made them feel like they had to like step up their live game a little bit, <laughs> which was a big compliment to me. And I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I didn't think they would say something like that, you know. But it, it was, it was cool because I really was hoping like. They would get back into it again, and 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 things would, um, and they'd get back to being what they were in a great live band. And I think you know, um, I think from the time period that I came in to uh, when we retired was probably uh, their shows were probably better than they had been in a long time. Um, and so, sort of like bringing it back up to date, Punk Rock Reduno. What do you think? Is it not just the greatest festival you've ever been to? Yeah, I, I, you know, punk rock shows in general, you have the mixture. You have like the real, you know, uh, political punk rock kids, and you have the more blue collar punk rock kids. Then you have like the, like the, um, uh, like the, 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 some of the crowd that like Fugazi and those guys brought in. They were like kind of a smarter kids, you know, the like geekier kids, whatever. Yeah. But um, this is um, this festival seems to be really like super duper Ramones cool. influenced, you know, high tops and jeans, and <laughs> it's just my kind of crowd. So, but this is a nice, small, easily managed, fun. You know, you're not waiting this. You know, ten hours in between bands you want to see. It's like everything goes off on time. It's <laughs> perfect. It's perfect. I love it. My kind of festival. And was it was it the best experience ever in your life to join the Ramones? Then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think once you you know, it's like the guys who walked on the moon. Once you walk on the moon, what are you going to do after that? That's going to count for anything, you know. Well, you walk with them. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> once you've been in the Ramones, you got you know, I'm hard pressed to to. Uh, to figure out what I'm going to do next, but I put out a couple of great albums on my own and, and been out touring and doing my thing for a while. Um, you did an album early on, um, the first album, or well, first single at least, was um, a native with a native in American band. Am I, am I right in thinking? Oh about yeah, that that, yeah. that was um, with my band Los Cusanos. Yeah. We did a um, we did a single right. Yeah. We did a single um, for. Um, uh, a native-run four-year college 
uh, out on the Pine Ridge Reservation in the Dakotas. And um, that, yeah, that's like real early on. That came out on um, Alternative Tentacles, yeah. Joe Bialpa's label. Yeah, that's that's going back a good ways there. <laughs> that's the Ramones were still together there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The four original Ramones. Yeah. What, what was your impression of the four original Ramones? Before? But Tommy actually was the um, the creator of the Ramones. He was a guy, he came up with everything, the look, the sound. He told everybody what instruments they were going to play. Um, it was, uh, he's really the guy. Once uh, Tommy stepped back um, and, uh, and from, well, he uh, of course, originally he stepped back and just kept producing. But once he was out of the picture completely, Johnny became the, the, the band, the boss in the band. Um, and his personality fit it. Johnny was, you know, he was a, um, he went to military school when he was a kid. He grew up very blue collar. Um, he was he enjoyed being in charge. Yeah, very conservative. He liked it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Johnny gets a bad rap a lot. People are like, oh, you know, he was he was this, he was that. But the other thing I always remind people of is you had uh, Marky, who was a, at the time an alcoholic. You had Dee Dee, who was a drug addict and had mental problems. And you had Joey, who suffered from mental illness also. So Johnny, um, those were his bandmates. Those were the guys he like lived on the road with, you know? I think um, just to keep the Ramones going must have taken a lot of willpower on his part. It, you know, he may have been a hard ass, but it was a necessary part of his um, job responsibility was to keep the whole thing going. Dee Dee, like I said before, Dee Dee, I was always, Dee Dee was always my guy in the band. Um, my, definitely my favorite bass player of all time. Um, but I have to say, I come from a heavy metal background, so Geezer Butler is kind of like real. <laughs> Geezer Butler's the guy who made me want to play bass. Um, but Dee Dee, to me, is one of the greatest rock and roll songwriters of all time. He was an amazing performer. He was a great bass player. He was really a, a unique guy. A really a unique guy. Um, there's a lot of people who try um, to uh, emulate some of the things that came naturally to Dee Dee. He was just, he was just like a, a real one of a kind. Um, but I was friends with Dee Dee. I played in the remains with him, so I had a lot of um, uh, in, you know personal interaction with him. And, uh, you know, he was crazy. He was crazy. I mean, there's no way around it. Dee Dee was crazy. But uh, he still had a good heart. Um, he did a lot of crazy things, but he did a lot of really good things also. Always treated me with respect. He was always nice to me. We had our differences and had arguments and stuff. But, um, but in the end, I would say that he had a good heart. He really did. And he won that for Joey. Joey. Joey was more my friend than anybody in the band. Johnny, whereas Johnny was my mentor or my father figure, Joey was my friend. Me and Joey went to shows together. I, you know, I used to hang out with him all the time. You know, we would go out to eat or I'd stay at his apartment in Manhattan and we would, we would, we would just sit up and listen to music. Like we would just listen to bands. And when I first got into the band, um, I really turned Joey onto a lot of new music. And that, and um, because he was always interested in new stuff, it was just, you know, I guess he just never had the opportunity to really, or never felt comfortable enough to go out and see new bands and whatnot. So when we got together, I made him go see a lot of new bands, and and it really helped him kind of get um, uh, get back into music. You know what I mean? You know, when when it's your job and when you do it day and night and everything, sometimes it. It gets harder and harder to uh, to enjoy it, but um, he really started to enjoy it again. We went to shows. We had a great time. He was more like my friend, without a doubt. Um, Mark Ramon, Marky. Uh, if it wasn't for Mark, touring would have been a lot more difficult. Mark had a way of lightening the mood whenever things were really kind of wound up. 
he would call, he would say something or do something that would just make everybody laugh and like stop being serious for a minute. He, you know, and it, and that and I don't mean to make him sound like a clown or anything like that. Like his role was really important besides being a drummer. If you don't have a guy like that around, things can be miserable all the time, you know. And that's not to say he was a pushover or anything like that. He wasn't a pushover. He wasn't, you know, stupid or weak or anything like that. It really was, to me anyway, one of, outside of his drum playing, was one of his biggest contributions. He really made touring uh, more tolerable. Because, of course, in the band, the differences between Johnny and Joey would make it a little uneasy in the van a lot of times. I mean, it didn't affect me much. I rode in the last seat in the van. I always had my headphones on and was always reading books, so I was in my own world. But there were times just during discussions and whatnot, and Mark always, always would know how to break the ice and, and just make everybody laugh. Um, he was great to tour with. He really was. He was, a, it was a, never late, always there on time. He was, he was just a good guy, a good guy. So, as we've, as we've discussed all the other Ramones then, what about Richie? Do you know Richie at all? So, just over the last couple of years, me and Richie um, started uh, talking. We played together a couple of times. Back in um, the mid-90s, when I was about to do um, a second album with the man Los Gusanos we talked about earlier, yeah. I contacted Richie to, and asked him to play drums. At that point, Richie had not played drums in a long time, um, and um, and when I first approached him, he was like, uh, you know, why why do you want me to play drums for you? I was like, I was like, you know, not for nothing. I was like, after Tommy, you're my favorite drummer in the Ramones. You know, I felt like when when Richie came in, he made the band tough again. Him and Dee Dee were a really good rhythm section together, um, but he ended up turning it down. Um, then just a couple of years ago, 2012 I think it was, um, Richie and I both went to do the um, Bozerite Guitar Company's 60th anniversary and uh, we were both there and, and the, the guy who, who put the whole thing on, my buddy Jiro Kabi, said, hey, would you guys be willing to get up and play a couple of songs together? And we were like, yeah, sure. So we got up and did a few songs together. Um, we did a, a, a show in, together last year down in um, Argentina, um, and we just played at the Richie uh, Joey Ramon birthday party together. So, you know, we're in touch. We're talking. We're always thinking. You know, so uh, maybe you know down the road or something. But um, it's. I think I may be one of the only people on earth to have played with everyone that ever played in the Ramones because I also played with Clem Burke. So I think I played. I think I played with every person who ever played in the Ramones. Well, I guess we'll round it up there then. Okay. Yeah, you too. Right? <laughs>